tryptophan is eat a steak. Uh, another is to take it in a pill. I take it every night before I sleep. I prefer steak. <laughs> <laughs> It relaxes me, puts me to sleep. Oh, it is steak. Yeah, that's true. A good steak. Yeah, tryptophan is the precursor of serotonin. And and it does better in getting serotonin levels up when you give it peripherally. um, When you're talking about brain serotonin than peripheral serotonin. And the reason is that tryptophan is pumped into the brain. So if you eat a steak, you're, eventually you digest it and you absorb amino acids, one of which is tryptophan, which is what I'm talking about. And the tryptophan gets into the blood and goes to the capillaries or the small blood vessels that supply the brain, and they have a transporter and they move tryptophan into the brain. Otherwise, the blood-brain barrier keeps it out. And usually the enzymes that were the catalysts that make serotonin are not saturated and so when you put give them more tryptophan to chew on they make more serotonin so you can get a little jolt of more serotonin by taking tryptophan in the brain that works you talked about so many things from cholera to globalization and foodborne agents. And I, I scared myself. I I, you scared up, me too. Gave up oysters. I will never eat a raw oyster. Talk about why. I think it's important for the audience. Well, I have two reasons. Most people would have one. So one reason is that I'm Jewish and... Uh, uh, I discovered the hard way, I think, that my ancestors may have been on to something when they said, don't eat oysters. And I can think that, you know, there were, you know, the flight from Egypt and they were getting the commandments and getting all set about what's going to be kosher and what's not and talking to Moses. And they noticed that if you got, if you're out in the Sinai Desert and it's 104 in the shade and somebody brings you an oyster in from the sea, and nobody has a refrigerator, best not to eat it. So talk about what we know now about the oysters. That still applies. And the reason it applies is that oysters are filter feeders. That is, whatever crap is in the sea gets concentrated in an oyster because they filter it. They filter their food and they eat it. How about clams? They do the same. Okay. And that means if you eat it, it had better have been living in very pristine water. And pristine water is becoming harder and harder to come by. Um, If you must eat them, be sure they, I would think it's a good idea to get them from some northerly climate, you know, like Nova Scotia, (laughs) where it's cold. Um, So I wrote in my book about a Khaleesi virus epidemic. You know, some ships sailed into the Gulf of Mexico, cleaned out its bilges, <laughs> dropped all that stuff over an oyster bed, a prime oyster bed. The oyster fishermen went out, bring in the oysters, sold them all over New Orleans, and they had a Khaleesi virus epidemic. And they were very good about it. The public health people, they discovered, I got it, Khaleesi virus, and they typed it and found where it came from, found what oyster house was putting it out, and it was lots of them. So they tracked the oysters, and they all came from a single ship and found the bed. And they found the guy, you know, who was infected, you know, who defecated on the ship, and they cleaned out the bilge and put it into the oyster bed. And so people had, you know, their an epidemic in New Orleans. No, that convinced me I don't need oysters. Let's talk about cholera for just a moment. Sorry. That's okay. <laughs> I didn't need to, I'm probably ruining your life. No, 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 it's okay. It's okay. I never ate oysters or clams anyway. Oh, okay. And I'm also Jewish, by the way. Cholera. In 1998, you said it claimed the lives of 3 million children. I'm sure it's higher now. Oh, yeah. Look, it's, it's devastating Haiti at the moment. As we speak... The U.N. sent peacekeeping troops to Haiti, and they had a campment of troops. They contaminated the drinking water and brought the virus over from Africa, not the virus, the uh, cholera, 
Um, they brought the bacterium over from Africa. And uh, it's doing a job. So what cholera does is uh, it turns on, it makes a toxin that causes the switch that puts fluid into the gut, which is very useful for getting rid of organisms, but it turns it into high gear and you can't turn off. And so it makes your colon a spigot and you just clean it out. And it gets so clean, the stool doesn't even smell anymore. It's just so clean, it's wonderful, except that you die that way because you're just flowing out. And so the way it's treated is they have cholera cots in which they put a hole in the cot and a graduated cylinder under the patient and you just keep track of how much fluid is coming out and put that back intravenously, that amount, and you can keep a patient alive. You don't even need antibiotics. They don't do much. You just have to keep a person going. So there's no reason if you have a, you know, fluid replacement therapy adequately that anybody should die of cholera. Is there a way to get that bacteria out of the system once you have it? Well, you don't have to worry about it. You knock it out. You're much tougher than it is. So is there a way to prevent oneself from getting cholera for the people sure. that are traveling? Yeah, bring your water. <laughs> Purify your water with chlorine tablets or boil it. That'll do it. How long do you have to boil it? Just a few minutes, one or two minutes. As long as it's, the, the organism is hates that kind of heat. Once you've boiled water sufficiently and then it cools off, you can still drink it. Oh, sure, sure. You don't have to drink it while it's boiling. You can't do that. <laughs> Once you boiled it, you kill the organisms and, and then you're fine. Well, unless you pour other water into it that's contaminated. The other thing you have to do when you're dealing with a waterborne pathogen is not eat anything that's been in the water. For example, if you like to clean your lettuce off and you clean it off with contaminated water, you can, lettuce can give you a good case of cholera. What about in the United States right now, for those of us living in the United States, how do you clean your vegetables and your fruits? I clean my vegetables and things off with water because I live in New York City, and New York City has extremely good water. They have a very good watershed. Our corrupt predecessors made a fortune buying land upstate, but now the city owns it. And they try to keep as much as possible the communities upstate New York from contaminating New York City's drinking water. And they have so far been successful. Interesting. But New York City is a very good place to get water. And in most communities in America are also quite good because even if they don't have very pure water to begin with, they purify it and put some chlorine in and fix it. So it, it, nothing, no pathogens. So you can clean stuff off. And it's a good idea to do it because uh, much of the uh, fruit and vegetables that we get in this country come from areas where you know, you know enough not to eat them when you're there, but we import them and then eat them here. So it's a good idea to clean them pretty well. It's amazing how much is imported, even with Trader Joe's and Whole Foods. Unbelievable how much we import. Oh, absolutely. By the way, you know, the heart-healthy diet has been great for the heart, but it's been hell on the gut. That's interesting. Do you take enzymes, pancreatic enzymes, or any type of enzymes? No, I make my own. My pancreas takes care of me. The only way, reason you'd need them is if for some reason or other your pancreas failed. Um, it does that in people with pancreatitis uh, or people who have cancer of the pancreas and have the pancreas removed. Then you have to take pancreatic enzymes. Otherwise, you're fine. You wrote a lot about globalization and foodborne agents and how easy it is to contract something. Why did you write about that in The Second Brain? Well, in 1998, it was a very cogent problem. It was just beginning. Uh, and now it's more cogent. Here, I just spoke of uh, the UN sent troops to Haiti right. to maintain order. They came from Africa bearing cholera. They set up a camp, and now there's a cholera epidemic raging in Haiti. Haiti has no good way of cleaning water. 
everybody's drinking contaminated water, and it just keeps going on and on and on. And so 